Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Chris, and tonight I will be your guide as we journey to ancient Egypt to find peace and comfort in the love story of Astarte and Set. Astarte was viewed as the ancient goddess of war and love, two concepts that feel so different from one another, though it is fair to say that love can often feel like a war of its own. Though many of the ancient texts of Astarte and Set's love have been lost to the sands of time, we can piece the story together to create a tale of love unlike any other. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find peace and comfort in the place that we are in, here and now. Gently and slowly close your eyes. With your eyes closed, find a comfortable position on your mattress. Here and now, there are no obligations. There is no to-do list. All you need to do at this moment is lie in your bed and allow your body to rest. Relax your muscles. Let go of any thoughts that might occupy your mind and follow the sound of my voice and as we dive further and further into this story, you will find yourself relaxing more and more. With your eyes closed and your body sinking deeper and deeper into the mattress, with every breath you take, try and turn attention to that breath as you breathe in Imagine that you are breathing in a soft orange light. It is a gentle glow, like the warm rays of the setting sun washing across the sky. When you breathe in that soft orange light, feel that warmth radiate through your body. It starts in your lungs and spreads in ripples across your chest, down your arms and legs, and all the way to your fingers and toes. With that wave of warmth, your whole body feels comforted and safe, able to sink deeper into the mattress and closer to sleep. As you exhale, imagine that light cooling in your chest. It goes from that soft, glowing orange to a pale, gentle blue. It has a silvery sheen to it, like the color of the moonlight just beyond your window. As that breath leaves your lungs and floats up into the room around you, notice that you feel lighter. With that breath, you are breathing out any of the tension, worries, or stresses that you have been carrying inside you. Once again, inhale the soft, warm light the goodness of the universe, and exhale the stress, the worries, and anxiety in that gentle blue light. Inhale the soft, warm light, the goodness of the universe, and exhale the stress the worries 
and anxieties in that gentle blue light. Picture that warm orange light slowly becoming part of your body. Feel it glowing from your hands, your forearms, your biceps, your shoulders, your chest, your stomach, your legs, and your feet. With that light around you and glowing from inside you, you are safe. You are at peace. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in here and now, let us begin our story. At the time of our story, the earth was still young. It was a wild place, a place of great beauty, a place of magic, a place full of potential. Gazing down from the heavens above, it looked much like it does today. It was a living blue marble in a sea of the inky black cosmos. The seas, oceans, and lakes were a mosaic of colors. There were the cerulean depths that stretched all the way to the deepest sea floors. The cobalt waves kissing the shores of the Mediterranean. The turquoise waters off the coast of Australia and the Caribbean. And the islands of the Pacific, where coral reefs laced across the sand just below the shimmering surface. There were the icy, baby blue waters of alpine lakes that seemed to pop against the granite rocks holding them in. Granite rocks that had been there to witness the glaciers forming their pristine little lakes. Then there was the land. And the land was what truly amazed the ethereal woman looking down at the earth. There was where the magic truly lied. There were the never-ending boreal forests that stretched across the northern sections of the world. Evergreen forests of pine, cedar, and spruce. Then there were the tropical rainforests that wrapped their way around the equator. Forests of fern, emerald, and spring green that were impossibly beautiful and dense. There were the mountains, a blend of sepia tones that rose through the landscape, tall and mighty and breathtaking. They seemed to be reaching for the heavens, reaching for the woman looking down at this stunning scene. And perhaps that was the first thing that made her want to reach down, that made her want to be a part of this. She was amazed at how many things could fit on this one picture-perfect little marble. The cottony clouds that swirled across the earth in wisps only piqued her interest more. She knew she would feel safe there. She would feel as though she belonged. And so, the woman began her journey. For so long, for centuries, ever since the earth had formed, She had existed up in the heavens as a star, a brilliant star that glowed every color one could imagine. She radiated pink, blue, red, and yellow, changing and shifting with her mood and the mood of the universe around her. But Astarte's days as a star were over. Now, 
she was ready to see the earth, to help the people on it, to live the life she had always dreamt of living. And so, down she went. She cascaded through the darkness of space, beelining straight for the earth in a breathtaking arc. She smiled to herself as she sailed down, and down, and down, cascading through the atmosphere. The beauty of nature only increased as she grew closer. The mountains that had seemed to be reaching out to kiss her were more than just giants rising up into the sky. They were ridges of stone and moss and plants. The forests were more than just swathes of green. Soon, she could see every leaf, every patch of moss, every bird singing their song in their treetop homes. Astarte knew then that the earth was even more magical than she had ever imagined. And then, it was time for her grand entrance. In her fiery star form, she crashed upon the earth. People from all around watched in awe as she cast a trail of colors behind her, something they had never seen before. But it wasn't the earth that broke Astarte's fall. It was a lake, a quiet, peaceful lake near the ancient city of Byblos in modern-day Lebanon. She landed in the water with a sizzle that rose up into the sky, drawing the attention of all the fishes and families playing in the water. Underneath the surface, she opened her eyes for the first time. She was in a swirling world of blue. Floating in the water somehow made her feel freer than being up in the cosmos ever had. She felt weightless, untethered to anything but her own dreams and aspirations. She swam her way to the surface and took her first life-changing gulp of the air. In it, she could taste the freshness of the trees around her, the saltiness of the ocean in the far distance, the briskness of the rain-kissed soil in the fields just over the mountaintop. It was invigorating, revitalizing. A fisher paddled over to her, concerned, wanting to make sure the beautiful maiden was all right. But the closer he got, the more he realized Astarte wasn't just a normal maiden. She was the most beautiful being he had ever seen. Even with the cow horns that rose from her long, black hair. He offered a spot in his boat for Astarte, but Astarte told him with a smile that she could handle herself just fine on the earth. She swam to the edge of the water and lay on the sand there, soaking in the warmth of the sun on her soft skin. She smiled because finally, She was where she belonged, and soon her purpose on the earth became exceedingly clear to her. She was the goddess of love and war. It was a title that came to her within her first few months on earth. An undeniable title that every god and goddess knew was well earned by her. You see, at the time, the world was in a state of chaos. 
the gods and goddesses were all fairly new, all trapped in petty fights with one another. But Astarte wouldn't stand for it. She saw the beauty of the earth, the potential of living here, the gift all the gods and goddesses had by simply residing here. And so, many days, she would ride her chariot, led by fierce horses, into war, putting an end to battles more quickly than anyone could imagine. Her fighting was, in a way, peacekeeping, and many of the gods feared her because of this. But, in this peacekeeping, she brought another gift to those around her, the gift of love. Gods, goddesses, and humans alike couldn't help but fall for the goddess. This powerful goddess with such love for the earth that she would do anything to protect it. And one of those gods was the mighty Egyptian god Set. Set, in a way, was a mirror to Astarte herself. He was the sky god, lord of the desert, storms, disorder, war, and chaos. He was a trickster who didn't fight in wars for the same reason that Astarte did. He was a god that knew this element of life was necessary, no matter how much we all wished it wasn't. At first, Astarte really disliked Set. After all, the chaos that he whipped up across the land created messes that she had to clean up. And yet, as she lay eyes on Set in battle for the first time, it felt as though time suddenly slowed down. He was a beautiful god. Though he rode through battles with power, there was a softness in his face, a playfulness to his eyes. There was something to him that made Astarte feel in a way she never had before. Their love began soon after Set repealed a pep, the serpent of chaos, protecting the world from darkness. Astarte sat by his side along a winding river, having missed the opportunity to help him in battle. For the first time, the two spoke of their roles on Earth. As Astarte talked, Set listened with unwavering attention. She was undeniably a beautiful goddess. So beautiful that many had trouble even forming words or treating her like she was a person. But, that wasn't a problem for Set. It wasn't her looks that he was enamored by. It was her wild spirit and her inexorable kindness. Even though she was known by many as a ruthless goddess of war and a fierce battler. For the first time, Set could see why she was the goddess of love. And in that, he found himself falling in love with her. From that moment on, they were inseparable. They resided in a desert kingdom, a vast palace where the two of them could live in peace with their chariots, horses, and weapons. They spent many days just lying in one another's arms until it was time to take on their roles as gods. 
when Set was forced to begin a war. It was Astarte who had put an end to it, and the time was right. They balanced each other out in every aspect of their lives. But both war and love are uncontrollable. And finally, a time came when both of them were forced to see that. Yam was the god of the sea. Though Set and Astarte had power, their power paled in comparison to the power of Yam. He represented the untamed power of the sea, power that few could even imagine. And so, when Yam requested the first harvest of all his subjects, the gods and goddesses had no choice but to bend to his requests. Astarte and Set wandered out to their garden on the harvest day, turning their gaze up to the sun as it kissed their skin. They prayed for a successful offering to Yam, for a year of happiness with one another. They spent the day tending to the earth and gathering its bounty. As they harvested the fruits of their labor, they found themselves blissfully smiling with one another. Perhaps it was the smell of the soil, the freshness of the earth, or the accomplishment they had with their garden. But the whole thing made them feel more connected than ever. More than once, Set stopped his work to take Astarte in his arms and kiss her gently, whispering of his love and admiration for her. Astarte whispered her love for him back, grateful to have found a love like this. And so, the time came for them to take the offerings to the other gods and decide who would ferry them all to Yam. It was a task no one wanted to take. He was, after all, a powerful, ruthless god. When Astarte and Set settled down with the other gods, they had a rather nice afternoon. Everyone drank and talked as the sun shone down on them, warming their spirits and their bodies. Neither Astarte nor Set could have been prepared for what came next. The gods told Astarte that she was to be the one to take their offerings to Yam. Astarte put on a brave face, assuring the gods she could handle such an unpleasant task. But the shadow of uneasiness washed over Set. He couldn't bear the thought of his beloved going beneath the sea to visit such an unpredictable god. Astarte picked up the basket of produce and smiled at her love. She kissed him gently, a long, lingering kiss that was like a salve to all the fears swirling inside of Set's head. She smiled up at him, admiration sparking in her eyes, as she promised him she would be fine and she would be back very soon. And so, Astarte began her journey into the deepest depths of the world. Yam's palace was deep beneath the sea, a place that few gods or goddesses had ever been before. As she approached the shore, the ocean began to part for her. She took a deep breath for strength and started her journey down into the waves. As she entered, the moving waves curled around her, creating a tunnel of sapphire, 
but for a moment, Astarte forgot the task at hand. She was walking through the ocean, breathing the salty, invigorating air as she did so. She was seeing the ocean in a way that no one ever had before. She could see fish swimming just beyond the wall of water. She could see seaweed swaying just beside her, and crabs and lobsters scuttling across the surface, giving her looks of surprise as she made her way to the kingdom. Gradually, it grew darker and darker around her, but Astarte felt no fear. She was the goddess of war. She could handle a few hours with a god like Yam. The palace that she approached was impressive enough to make her breath catch in her throat. It was the grandest thing she had ever seen. It rose dozens of stories from the ocean floor, glistening in the sunbeams that streamed down from the surface. It was crafted of gold and silver and mother of pearl, which all shimmered and shined with their luxury. Astarte neared the palace with a bit of hesitation. She had never expected to be entering a place of such beauty and grandeur. But the moment she reached the doors, they swung open for her, revealing the inside of the stunning palace. And the inside was even more marvelous than the outside. There were halls of marble and gold, all carved to resemble shells and ocean waves. All Astarte could do for a moment was gaze around in wonder. She was so enamored that she didn't even notice Yam as he came up behind her and placed a soft hand on her shoulder. It is a beautiful place, is it not? He said. Calmly, Astarte told the god that it was indeed the most beautiful palace she had ever seen. She handed the basket of freshly harvested food to the god's servants, who whisked it away to another room for safekeeping. Astarte made small talk with the god, keeping a pleasant smile on her face. But soon, it became clear that Yam had no intention of letting her leave the palace. He referred to her as a furious and tempestuous goddess, a title that she wasn't ashamed of in any way. He declared, that Astarte was now his wife, the wife of the sea, the wife of the ruler of uncontrollable and unpredictable power. Astarte knew she couldn't fight this title bestowed upon her. Instinctively, she knew she had to act as though she had received a great honor. Deep down, though, she trusted Set would know better. She trusted that he knew her well enough to come and rescue her. News traveled to the surface rather fast. And not just of the marriage, but of the request that Yam had sent along with that news. He requested adornments from the gods in celebration of his new bride. He requested beads, signet rings, and gold, irreplaceable items much cherished by the gods. Set could not contain his anger and worry for the love of his life. He knew she would never abandon him, would never want to marry a god as cruel 
and narcissistic as Yam. He would have to save his love by all means necessary. He offered to take the gifts to Yam. The gods, sensing his anger, warned him not to act on his jealousy and rage. But Set calmly told the gods that he could handle himself. He knew exactly what he was going to do. And so, he neared the ocean at the exact spot where his love had entered only a short time ago. He took a deep breath as the ocean parted yet again, revealing the path to the palace for him, the path that would lead him back to the woman he belonged with. He walked down the corridor, his eyes focused straight ahead of him. To the sides, the lobsters and crabs scuttled across the surface. The seaweed swayed in the gentle current. The fish floated on by, carefree. And finally, the palace came into view. Just like Astarte had, Set hesitated in the doorway to take a deep breath. He had to trust that his plan to reunite with the love of his life would be successful. He had to trust that Yam's self-infatuation and blind trust in his own powers would be enough to allow this to work. The doors swung open, revealing the palace of gold and marble. Set was truly in awe. But he amplified his amazement even more, putting on a show for Yam. He bowed to the god, complimenting him on his palace and greatness. As he bowed, out of the corner of his eye, he caught sight of Astarte. She was sitting upon a throne in the corner of the room, trying to hide the tears of relief in her eyes at the sight of him. That is when Set assured himself that his plan needed to work. It had to work. He gave Yam the gifts with a warm smile, telling him that out of anyone, he deserved them the most. Yam relished in the gifts of gold and wealth and magic. With a smile, he even offered some to Astarte, who took them with an uneasy smile. Set continued to shower Yam with compliments, so much so that Yam seemed to have entered a dreamlike state, bathing in his own narcissism. He remarked, that he liked Set. Perhaps, in fact, Set was his favorite of all the lesser gods. He invited Set to join them for dinner, a request which told Set his plan was working. They all settled down for a lavish meal. Set sat down calmly and confidently, trying to trust that all would be well in just a short amount of time. As they ate, Set spoke to Yam about his power. He remarked that he was a bit surprised that a god as powerful as Set would want someone like Astarte. She was a lesser god after all. And didn't Yam, as almighty as he was, deserve a bride that matched him in influence and beauty. Yam leaned forward in his chair, soaking up every word that Set uttered. Set wondered aloud if it was possible for Yam to create a bride for himself, a bride that was truly worthy, a bride that was truly deserving of a god as majestic as Yam. 
his ego inflating by the moment, Yarm declared that of course he could create a bride for himself. In fact, he had been considering it for quite some time. Using his powers, Yarm took seawater and turned it into a bride of immense beauty. The woman blinked to existence and wrapped her arms around Yarm, complimenting him the instant that she came to be. Set and Astarte's eyes met over the table. Set could see the relief in Astarte's gaze and the love in them. The next part of the process would be challenging. It would have to be done with immense care and tact. Set told Yarm that he could take Astarte back to the surface, if that's what he had liked. He could tell the other gods that Astarte was not wise, beautiful, or powerful enough to be the wife of Yarm, or something that would puzzle the gods, as they all thought Astarte was the most beautiful, powerful, and wise bride that could ever exist. Fueled by his ego, Yarm stood up and declared that that was exactly what he wanted Set to do. With a dismissive wave of his hand, he ordered the two of them to return to the surface and inform the gods of his new wife. Set and Astarte walked out of the palace carefully, not wanting the god to catch on to the fact that this was their plan all along. Slowly, they made their way up the path to the surface. It was a long, winding walk that they took in silence. They didn't dare speak to one another, nor look at one another. They were still in Yarm's domain, and he could easily drop the waves upon them at any moment. But soon, they reached the surface. As their feet hit the sand of the beach, they both felt a wave of utter relief. But they didn't trust it yet. They walked in continued silence all the way to the peak of the nearest mountain, a place where the god of the sea had no domain and no power over them. And finally, in the light of the setting sun, they embraced Astarte wept as she borrowed her head on Set's chest. Set ran his hand over her hair, kissing her forehead over and over. It was the greatest moment of love and passion that the two had ever felt. Nothing could replace how they felt in each other's embrace. Set promised Astarte they would never be apart again, and Astarte promised Set the same. They held one another on that mountain for what felt like hours. And when they finally descended, they never forgot their promise. For the rest of their days, the two were utterly inseparable. The god and goddess of war may have had strange roles in the world, but they were necessary. And on the other side of that necessary chaos was the immense love they shared for one another and for the world. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.